T-minus three, two, one, zero. Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of the Launch Sequence Podcast, episode 74. And today, believe it or not, we're talking about some Star Citizen. And I've got my friend Star Streams with me today because you we got... You did not say it was about Star Citizen. <laughs> I'm sorry, I completely forgot to mention that. Jeez. <laughs> sorry, I, I sent him the questions, I, I sent him all of the news. I didn't mention that we were talking about Star Citizen, though. I, not once. I realized you wouldn't, you wouldn't guess that. But anyways, <laughs> surprise everybody. We're talking about some Star hey. Citizen today. It's a good topic, too. Um, this game runs in cycles. Cycles of different types and different lengths. But there is one distinct cycle that never fails, and that is the community. We get exciting things, we get very pumped by it, we enjoy it, and then after a while we start to see the holes in it, and then we start to find it a little bit of a nuisance, and then we get bored, and then we wait, and then we start over. And we're, we're, we're in that waiting phase this year, and it is a, uh, a long one, because 317 came out, I believe, in May or April, and we are still in that patch branch. So today, me and Starstreams are gonna talk about kind of the burnout that you start feeling what we do during this period, why it's like this, and uh, when we might expect the next update. Thank you so much for joining me. How are you doing today? Me? I'm doing great. Thank you very much, Mr. Tomato. I said, is it tomato or tomato? I never know. Uh, you know what? It's up to you. Mr. T, I'll call you Mr. T. It, it can, I'm doing it can really be well. Mr. T. I'm yeah, and I'm I'm going to Spain next week, so I'm really excited for that. My first holiday in 65 years. Ooh, that's uh, yeah. wow, that's going to be a heck of a holiday then. Yeah, 65 years of, of patience built up for that. Patience, that's it. And how about you? How are things with you? Ah, oh, things are good. Um, it's it's nice and sunny outside. You know, it's been quite rainy for us, rainy and drizzly and. Uh, we got a nice day going on. I've been fighting with my radiators to try and get the heat on for the last week mm -hmm. or so, and we finally got that running. We just got my internet rewired. There's a lot of issues with this house. <laughs> we just oh, got no. a and couple the of them figured out. Yes, yes. And then there is uh, speakers on the mosque right outside the window. So this just, you know, all kinds of things yeah. always going on. But we're good. We're good. We're happy. Good. Ready to go exciting. see family next month. Yeah. Way wow, that's great. Yeah. Yeah. I'm super excited to be here. Thank you so much for inviting me, by the way. Of course. My favorite thing, actually, that has been that has happened today is for over a week now, I haven't been able to play Star Citizen for a multitude of reasons. First was a 14, no, a 40K error, and then it was a 15K error, and then I believe I got hit with a 16K error, but I generally couldn't log on in sure. any way, and I had to reinstall the game probably three or four different times and this morning, I finally got it working again. So I'm happy to be able to get back into the game. Wow. Yeah. But yeah, that was a good. journey. Yeah. That was a lot. Man, I, I felt like I was pain. getting more gameplay out of trying to install the game than playing it. You should do a podcast about that. <laughs> the installation you process, should. trying to navigate I, the I website. Spend, I spend more time in the menu than I do in the game. So I think maybe there's some content there as well. Yeah, maybe. Well, that actually gets us uh, into the perfect start for this conversation, really, is I want to know where you came from to get to Star Citizen, because you are fairly new, right? You just started in the last year or so? That's right, yeah. I started uh, August last year. I came into the game. I bounced into it via Elite Dangerous, and um, I was doing various content before that. Okay. And uh, I literally spent about two months in Elite, and then someone else, I think somebody said, oh, you should try this other space kind of game. And I was like, okay, yeah, cool, I will. So uh, there was a free fly event, jumped into the free fly, thought, yeah, this is uh, this is quite good, and then uh, stayed and haven't left since, really. So um, I'm new, I'm not a backer since 2001 <laughs> or 17th century, not one of those, not one of those. Yeah. Um, but I am very new. Oh, geez. I'm, the OGs, uh, I'm not an OG, I'm a new person on the block, but, you know, I've, I've sunk many hundreds of hours into the game at this point, so I feel like I've got some level of uh, understanding on things. Yeah, you and picked it up. two citizen cons, yeah. Yeah, I mean, you've gotten to see some of the, I think, biggest, biggest changes 
so far that we that we've had since like 3.0 i mean uh 315 last year with the inventory and the medical stuff you've seen a yeah. lot of that that kind of growth so when you first heard about the game it was literally just in passing somebody mentioned it after you'd already started playing elite dangerous yeah yeah literally like that i was uh, doing a live stream on elite dangerous and and people were mentioning um this game called star citizen and to be honest i'd never heard of it before it wasn't even on my radar mm -hmm. amazingly as i love space games i'd never ever heard of it um and then uh, yeah I, t I took a look and i thought okay yeah this looks like an mmo so that's my initial thought that's my initial impression of it and then i went in and thought this is great oh there's only one system oh there's only four planets <laughs> oh this isn't really an mmo then is it oh wait it's broken <laughs> wait what? What, what what do you mean bugs no, uh -huh. that can't be right. Yeah, no. What do you mean bugs and and wipes but I, but and concept was, yeah, sales? What, what mean, yeah. I thought, well, it's a, it's an it's alpha, right? So we're going to expect those. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. Uh, but um, I was I was so in awe when I went in, as everybody is when they go in, and the tram ride at New Babbage was insanely amazing. Now it's a pain, but it was amazing <laughs> back then. It the novelty is worn it? off. Novelty is very much worn off, um, which is why I. Never go to New Babbage. I always go to somewhere else. And mm. I, you know, I just, I just, I was so in awe with the game when I first went in. And um, I had a really slow gaming machine as well, which didn't help things. And I had a, I had 16 gig. And uh, when I first attempted, I had a hard drive, which I think is fatal. With, with yeah, stuff like yeah, that that will mess you up. Yeah. So I thought, what well, what is this? It's not, look how laggy it is. I was in New Babbage on a bog standard hard drive with 16 gig of memory. And it was horrific. And uh, someone said, no, no, you need a SSD drive at least for this. So I was like, okay, yeah. straight on a popular website and ordered a SSD drive. That's how into the game I was. And That uh, is, that's step uh, number one. Step number one. Yeah. And then, uh, yeah, there was, there was a definite difference. <laughs> so, yeah. That'll do it. So when you, when you started playing Elite Dangerous, um, was that game not really what you were looking for? Because you switched to Star Citizen very quickly. I think a lot of people did very switch quickly. over last year. But I'm curious because you said you were only two months in. Were you kind of playing it, waiting for something else to grab your attention? Was it not something you were settled on? On paper, Elite Dangerous ticks a lot of boxes for me. So mm -hmm. it's like the exploration uh, and that kind of thing. And um, I really, really loved it. But it wasn't a game that's particularly social because I was out in space on my own a lot of the time. and Okay. It felt a bit overwhelming and, uh, you know, I, I just, I just felt, I liked the immersion and, and, you know, I didn't really feel it that much. Mm -hmm. Um, I love the concept of it, like billions of planets, whatever, you know. But yeah. It's amazing. It's, I love that concept of it, but you know, Star Citizen, um, it's the immersion. I, I like to be able to go to a coffee machine and, and pour myself a coffee or whatever, which you obviously still can't do to this day on <laughs> Citizen, but I, I love the idea of that, you know. Yeah, a burrito, go to a bar and get a burrito and a and a and a you know cruise or whatever. And I and I thought that's insanely cool. And I come from a background in the eighties, like I'm I'm old now, so I remember like computer games in the early eighties. You know, I had an Atari two six double O. This stuff is incredible to me. And uh, you know, when you used to get video games, that was it. You get it on a cassette or a floppy drive or something, and that, a floppy disk or, and whatever, and that was it. What you got is what you got. There's no bugs, patches, anything like Well, there's lots of bug, bugs, but there's no patches. Yeah. So to have a game that's supported by many, many sort of rollout patches, lots of future, you know, rollouts potentially, a roadmap, all this sort of thing is insane. It's like it's being part of something, isn't it? That's yeah. what drew me to Star Citizen, the the kind of roadmap, the, the future idea of it, and Every you know, it's never about today. It's always about tomorrow, and that was exciting to be a part of. And so that's why that's ultimately why I switched into Star Citizen. I still do Elite sometimes, but start. I just don't stream it. <laughs> it is kind of, it's it's about more than just the game, and I think that's a positive and a negative. A lot of people just wish that it was about the game. The game was made. The game was done. Like the game was all the focus, but. There's a lot of focus on the community, on keeping events going, on keeping excitement up, on um, talking about the actual development and looking at it. And that kind of divides the community, in my opinion, the people who are interested in being a part of the development and seeing how it actually works and is built versus the people who really just want that game to play right now. And I think that latter group of people is becoming more popular, but I still, I still tell them like, Star Citizen is probably not in the best place for that kind of mentality. 
but that's exactly what you're describing. The idea of being part of that whole process and part of what makes the game come together is part of what brought you in and, and kept you around. Is is your excitement for that still as high as it was when you first joined, or you kind of gotten a little a little jaded by it? Uh, I oh, <laughs> it's, it's half and half. I I feel a little bit jaded with it, but but also I still hold some level of excitement for the future. A lot of the stuff that's talked about and that's coming up or on the roadmap and what have you doesn't really impact me because, you know, I, I see myself as a, like I, my, my game style is kind of industrial. It's mm -hmm. industrialist. You know, I love the mining elements and stuff like that. So um, that's not really affected by a lot of the changes that are happening. I mean, maybe the, we'll go probably more into the flight changes and things like that, which is going to definitely impact on me. But, you know, the, probably the most stable thing, rock mining for me, gem mining, that is, is it's probably at its most stable it's ever been for me. Mm -hmm. um, it's solid, but, you know, that bar the occasional crash to desktop or what have you, but it is, it's pretty solid now. I remember previous patches where it was just dropping every sort of 20, 30 minutes. It's not doing that anymore. So, you know, in terms of rock mining itself, it's, it's in probably the best place it's been in for a year, a year and a half at least. So mm -hmm. I'm kind of conflicted by it because I know that other areas of the game are really, really suffering right now and it's putting people off, certainly well, in my community. And even, even, you know, even taking a step back and looking at rock mining, something as simple as introducing new resources to mine from the rock that have some value is, those are the kinds of things I am even hearing from, from miners. Do you feel like, those sorts of details haven't moved enough since you've joined. It's been what four four patches, five patches, five updates since you came in. Yeah, the only thing they've changed, well, they've changed the speed of of the ground vehicles, which mm -hmm. I don't haven't really noticed at all, to be honest. On the grey cap, for example, and um, but they've 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 changed the scanning, the the way you scan, um, which is for the better, I think. But apart from that, it hasn't changed. I mean, I ignore. Aphorite, I ignored, you know, Dollar Vine. I don't think those two are even worth looking at. It's only had an eye, really, that anyone mines, which is a shame. It would be nice to have more variation there, you know, maybe put some incredibly rare gems somewhere in there that you mm -hmm. only find once a month or something, and it's like jackpot, you know? Yeah. It adds a bit, a bit of a lucky box thrill. Yeah. We're, we've kind of experienced recently with the loot boxes and the masks, right? It'll add mm -hmm. that kind of vibe to it. And, uh, you know, it's it's screaming for for better mining vehicles because, I mean, the the, the Rock DS is is horrific. It might it's it's the most pointless vehicle in the game, and and there's there's no positives about the Rock DS at all whatsoever. Um, it's just that you've literally just got the Grey Cap Rock, and that's it. At least with Perspector mining, which I don't do so much of, but I just, it just feels like it's in a feels like it's in a bit of a bad place at the moment, the perspective mining side of things. So that's, that. it sounds like that's mostly what you're spending your time doing is mining, rock mining. Oh, I love it. I love it. That's the only reason really why I continue to play Star Citizen. I, I <laughs> absolutely love rock mining and I do that on most of my live streams and it's a chill, chill thing and everyone sort of comes together and we set ourselves challenges like, can we fill the Val Cup before 30k? And yeah. All this sort of stuff, you know, these give us some little challenges, but uh, I, I love that. I'd, I'd love them to expand it, but it's there's so many other things going on. I, it just is low priority, I guess. For, for yeah, them. yeah, and that's that's something I'm always curious about. Is people obviously when your your part of the gameplay that you enjoy doesn't get worked on, it feels like the game's not really moving that quickly. Would you have expected something like ground mining to have seen progress in this amount of time since you've been here? Do you, do you kind of, you come from the angle of like everything else is being worked on, so you get it? Yeah, I, I spent, yeah, it hasn't moved forward. So it's it's always been as it is now, really, it feels like since I started playing, there's not a lot of difference, but I, I still enjoy it. But uh, I'd, I'd, I'm, I'd love to see something come in, you know, just to freshen it up a little bit. You know, maybe a new suit or a new way of mining or something, anything. Like, for example, with the Grey Cat Rock, I'd love to see you be able to have more flexibility with maybe skins and, and how, you how you know, switching out modules. I know you can do the cooler, which doesn't really do anything at the moment, and the and the power modules help. Yeah. But, you know, you've only got one mining arm, for example, and, and you know, where's 
where's the variety you know <laughs> where's yeah the variety? yeah it it ship mining got a good amount of stuff going on for it gadgets and consumables and stuff but the ground mining's always felt a little bit a little rough like they they just barely wanted to get it working because they have wildly different ideas for ground mining but we just don't know anything about that yet no and i haven't really seen anything about it i mean I, i'm assuming that when pyro eventually lands on our doorstep I'm assuming we can take our grey cats over there and start mining at a greater risk and things like that. So that's yeah. kind of interesting for me. Um, but yeah, they, I, I know they've got so many other things going on and we're entering this phase now where a lot of the stuff they're doing is perhaps under the uh, tip of the iceberg, so we're not necessarily seeing it. Um, a lot of the cosmetic stuff is kind of done, isn't it? Well, not done, but they've, they've kind of rolled it out. All the easy stuff has been done. The visual they've, stuff and now they're working behind the scenes on a lot of stuff they, yeah they've definitely gotten a lot of their tools into a mature state where it feels like they can put out more legitimate content rather than just designing and creating assets which is nice um you mentioned rock mining and pyro what would what would it take to get you to go to pyro to do rock mining as opposed to staying in <laughs> sta safe stanton oh, oh no i'd do it but but the <laughs> just, reward has to just be the there. fun of it i don't just for the fun of it, you know, if I get a tax, then great. If I, <laughs> um, I don't, I don't get it. I mean, I shouldn't really say that, but I don't really get that attack that often, really, 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 which is, which is kind of weird as I'm live streaming and it's pretty obvious where I am. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, I'd like to see that. I'd like to see the threat, um, or, you know, on pyro and I'd, I'd like to see the consequence. So you look, up a little bit. you look forward to the possibility of people coming in and blowing you up. Or at least extorting yeah. you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, extortion. Yeah. Are you gonna that, go? That would, that would work. Are you gonna go in with a uh, with an escort then? If you do, or are you just like every time you go into pyro, you'll have somebody escorting you, or are you gonna try and make it solo? I'll make it solo. Oh or, boy. Or I'll probably, or I might bring bring people with me, but I don't know. It'll be fun. I'll probably do both. Yeah, yeah. Um, it'll. There's definitely gonna be a learning yeah. period. Yeah, I'm super excited for that. Um. You know, that that would definitely add an element of risk, and and maybe I, I won't be so sloppy when I'm when I'm doing rock my like leave my back door open and stuff like that. But uh, which is really sloppy when you think about it. But it's so convenient at the same time. Yeah, and you're like out there on a moon. Nobody's yeah, around and you. Exactly, and and no one really cares because they're all looking for for masks. Yeah, yeah. And if somebody's going to sneak up on you, like you're going to hear their spaceship flying <laughs> flying down and landing right behind you. that's the thing yeah yeah and i mean generally you can you can kind of get away i mean this new flight mechanic that's that's kicking in is only going to benefit rock miners anyway isn't it because you're capping the speed of the uh certainly on the on the on the basic oh, control right, system right you're capping the speed of the ships so uh you know the, whereas before a gladius could could creep up on you at 1200 or whatever that's not going to be the case anymore is it so mm -hmm. <laughs> um you know so we, we're going to have like a few extra seconds to think about what we're going to do um that does help be interesting that does help speaking oh, yeah, of sure. speaking of that change so every once in a while star citizen has a a large like a big change you know it's a big change last year i would say it was the medical and inventory changes were kind of like a very substantial shift. This year, I don't really feel like we've had one yet. I think the new derelict systems were kind of like the introduction of a new change, but it, it didn't it didn't have that punch of all in one update. And now we kind of are seeing other potentials with persistent entity streaming in 318, but also like the gameplay changes you just mentioned, the speed changes. The state yeah. that the game is at right now, do you think that like you're seeing enough of these big changes? Do they feel like they're a little bit too slow coming? Like like it takes too long for these shifts to happen? What's your perspective on on those? I think well, I, it was definitely too slow, isn't it? Because we're we're losing we're losing people from the game, and that's pretty pretty evident. You only have to go to Google Trends and look up Style Citizen, you can see a big downward trend spiral. So, um, it's pretty clear. That Star Citizen is is uh, not as popular as, as it was maybe six months ago, but that's to be expected, I suppose, because we haven't had that massive patch rollout that's going to bring new gameplay necessarily to the game. And I, I they kind of shot themselves in the foot a little bit by with the roadmap 
you know, when they, they, they tweaked that roadmap and they uh, took a lot of stuff out, and it, I think that's the beginning of, of that kind of spiral. I think it happened kind of March, April, and there was, there was some really big AAA titles that came out, and I think, I think Star Citizen lost a few people to those titles for a while. And uh, we're only now starting to see people come back to the game. I think that's normal. There's a lot of people in my community that's saying, I'm out. Um, I'm out until 318. I'm out until salvage. Salvage seems to be the uh, the game that's going to salvage the game. Apparently, <laughs> we've it been seems waiting quite for weird. it. Everyone's looking forward to that. I'm looking forward to that. As an industrialist, I think salvage will be incredible. Do you know I how hope. much salvage has been delayed? I know it's been delayed, but I don't know how long it's been delayed for. Oh I heard my gosh! Year. Go on, go on, oh tell me. Oh my gosh! I think oh, it's no, no, been. Don't say this. It has been planned for probably at least once, if not twice every year since 2018 and you see, it, that worries me it, it it's been it is a joke the salvage feature is a joke and generally whenever people see it on the roadmap nobody believes it as of probably like last year because it was just always pushed back and the thing is the the roadmap changes you mentioned i think they were good i think that they didn't communicate them well enough but i think that right. They've had a persistent problem of not being able to predict things reliably and ending up in hot water when they didn't need to. I think what these these roadmap changes allowed them to do is <clears throat> is deliver. Get away from that. Well, yeah, <laughs> deliver, deliver more consistently, but also they can kind of they can be a little like they can live a little easier with what's coming. They can start to preview stuff in the monthly reports and maybe drop something into a Star Citizen Live, possibly a little bit of footage in, in inside Star Citizen. And even at that point, it's still not showing up on the roadmap so they can understand how people are going to react to it and kind of trickle it in. And it leads to, I think, a lot better reception of the updates. But you are right. The, the popularity has gone down. Um, it is a pattern. Every year, the most popular time for the game is generally May, Invictus Week. Uh, it's summertime, yeah. it's the big event, the free fly week. It's it's just a very good time for them. But you're also right about the people who are who are waiting for 318. So there are three things that usually cause people to kind of take a step back from Star Citizen. One is the patch that we're currently in being a little bit long in the tooth, a little bit uh, late to move on. The second is a progress wipe, which we don't see that often, but this will be, I think, the second this year. And the third is, um, uh, what is the third? Uh, the gameplay just in general is, is growing stale. And that again happens with this patch being so long. So we've had one patch for three quarters now or two quarters going on three and people are taking a break and waiting until 318 comes in. Do you, I mean, I, what do we, when we talk about gameplay, what do we, can we list the gameplay that's in the game right now? Because <laughs> this term tech demo is is said quite a lot. And it does kind of have legs when you really think about it. So what, what game loops do we actually have right now? We've got rock mining, which is, I think, really solid. Yeah. Um, you know, you've got perspective mining, I think at the moment is in not a great place. I think it's better than all, rock mining. All, all mining. Really? Just because you have I'm the other way around. Because you, 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 well, in terms of stability, maybe not, but in terms of like support, you have space, you have ground versions, you have uh, more minerals that you can mine for. Oh, I see what you mean. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you yeah. have like the refining. So it, it's a little, it gives you more to do, at least. Yeah. I, th I would say it's the other way around because with rock mining, it's more varied, even though there's only one thing you can do. So, for example, you're talking about really location. Mm -hmm. um you can do it in, in space or you can do it on the planet or, or sorry on the moons with rock mining um you're flying and scouting or whatever you're pinging and then you so you're doing low graph uh low gravity fl flying and then when you find something you're landing and you're then doing ground vehicle work um and i think that variation is what keeps it interesting for me mm -hmm. but when i'm in a perspective for example for example you are literally sat in that seat the whole entire time until you're cashing out at an admin office on a space station or whatever. So for me, it's not as interesting. So the variation, even though you've got more vehicles and 
yes, you've got more ores that you can mine, but the majority of people will only go for Quantanium anyway. Yeah. Um, it, the variation really is just quite, for me, quite cosmetic, whereas the gameplay loop itself is more varied rock mining, if that okay. makes sense. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know if I'm... But you've got, but, you've got three yeah. different versions of mining, right? Yeah. Rock, ship, and FPS. You have mercenary work. You can take these missions to go into bunkers and clear things out or go into caves and clear things out. Um, you have... They're quite buggy though, aren't they? And they are. The AI yeah. on them are really poor. Yeah. Um, which is which is what's holding them back, I think. But you're, you're right, we've got them as game loops, yeah. None of, yeah, none of this stuff is uh, <laughs> foolproof, <laughs> that's for no. sure. Um, but you've also got bounty hunting then in ships. Yeah. Um, yeah. You've got... Cargo. Which is more like jousting, isn't it? It's like two horses jousting each other at the moment. Yeah, yeah, depending on who you're fighting with, that's and, for sure. Unless you're Avenger 1, then it, there's a whole art behind it. But yes, then, for, then for you the, can for, feel for, the... For Joe, Public, <laughs> for Joe Public, like me, it's jousting. Yeah. Uh, either incredibly quick speeds or incredibly slow speeds. It's For me, it's jousting because yep. I'm terrible at, my, at the combat. Just call me Crashing Tomato because I will never finish a dogfight. <laughs> Okay, I will. <laughs> CT. And then there is, let's see, what else do we have? Cargo hauling and courier work. That's good. Two different things. Both kind of play a little bit differently. I would say cargo hauling needs a lot of help to be to to feel like cargo hauling, though. Jack Axton's tearing his hair out every day. I just had a, the old trade thing. Just had poor, a show with him, Jack. and he, yeah, he had he had plenty to say about it. I've I've, I've, <laughs> I've been talking to him about cargo pretty consistently for like the last year, and it's so sad, like how little the conversation has changed, even with the cargo refactor being such a big part of this year's updates. Just almost completely the same. I feel so bad, so yeah. bad for him. He loves it. He loves it, but he's trying his hardest to get contact. Can can you answer me a question, please? Mm -hmm. About about cargo. Can someone explain to me what use the hull A has? Because I got it and I, I've used it and it's really fun for the first 10 minutes or so and it looks really cool with the kind of things. Mm -hmm. But but it's really small capacity. Yeah, I don't understand. The whole A is going to be a ship that doesn't really see its benefit until the cargo gameplay starts to build out more, until you have timers that require people or require your ships to be loaded based on how easy they are to load. Until we right. have, sorry, yeah, kind of. <laughs> uh, until <laughs> until we have a more robust cargo system, so the economy is working in a way that like small ships will be carrying things from stations down to planets and making those sort of short range jumps. The whole A would fit into a spot where it's needed for those short range jumps that are uh, happening a lot over and over and need to happen fast, but aren't necessarily super high value. Like you could take so a whole like A a, out instead of a cutlass. Is it like a glorified cargo, cargo, cargo then? Yeah. Yeah. Kind of. It's like a bigger version of that. It's good for right. getting those small trips done. Got it. So it's a, uh ship to ship or ship to surface yeah because because the, the strength of the whole series obviously is that they carry their cargo on the outside so if you make use of that and you load your ship very quickly because you don't have to go inside of the ship to do it uh you should be able to make money on well i guess save time and money yeah okay that's good to know because i got i found it in my fleet i gave it a fly around and i could put about six SCU in it or something ridiculous. I can't remember what it was. Was now, it but, six? Uh, yeah. It's got to be like... I, I, no, 32 or something. I don't know. I might have uh. lied. But uh, I, yeah, it wasn't It wasn't very much. I think I managed to put like one scrap metal in it or something and yeah. got it to the surface and made a huge loss. Yeah. It's, it's, um, it's a niche ship. And I think a lot of people are missing how many of the ships in the game are niche ships, but we'll get into that. I'm, I'm working on a video for that right now because... Ooh, spoiler. Uh, Resource management is really going to mess up a lot of people's plans. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. What else do we miss in terms of game loops? We have exploration. Um, <laughs> exploration is another, another weird one. But I do think that I, I want to ask, do you consider, um, oh, geez, what was it? It was just on my mind. Now I lost it. Oh, uh, medical. Like a, being a medic, do you consider that a game loop that can be reliably no. played? No, 
it, it promised so much, delivered so little. I, I, everybody was like, oh, I want to play as a doctor in an ambulance. And we all ended up using the, originally used the Cutty Red as a respawner. But uh, now, now we're just, I mean, what, 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 what is that shit? But it's, it's, I don't think that it's fully fleshed out. I don't think it's really, truly picked up. I'm not, I mean, the, the idea is that if you are, if you play as an ambulance driver and you go to a rescue beacon, you're probably going to get jumped on. But um, my angle yeah, would be, uh, sorry, go ahead. No, I think that was it. I think that was the, the, the entire um, ambulance experience in a nutshell. What about forgetting the ambulance, though, right? And just having an organization with players who always go out on missions and just being the person that can be called on as the healer in that group. Does that seem yeah. like reliable gameplay? It seems, I mean, if you've got an org, if you've got an org um, then yes, definitely. But uh, to the average Joe like me, um, jumping into an ambulance, and that's the best part of it, jumping into an ambulance with flashing lights and uh, getting jumped on when you do a rescue beacon, which happened probably when I did it, happened eight out of ten times. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, it's It kind of ruins it a little bit, and it's it's a real shame because there's something quite fun and something quite, quite fun about doing rescue beacons. But people people don't, Seem to, unless they've got really good loot on them that they don't want to lose, there's no real reason why they don't just go back to menu or, you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. At the and, moment, you can get around it. And fixing that idea of how people play this game or approach it, I don't even know where to start, but a sort of meta forms around the game, right? People understand how to interact with each other in an MMO over time and, and there's definitely a danger that we could continue forward with people in Star Citizen never considering anybody to be friendly and always being shoot on sight or don't work together. Or we could take a turn and somehow figure out how everybody can start to trust each other and better play together. I have no you're idea. Talking about, that, you're talking that... about role play. And, and so first of all, I, I feel like Star Citizen is a bit confused. Its identity is a bit confused. What is Star Citizen? Is it a big MMO? Is it an action game? Is it a, is it a realistic game? Because the changes on the flight movements are going away from realism and into kind of action gameplay, yeah. which you could argue is a good thing. Some people argue it's not a good thing, but there's it's going to cause a split, a divide. Yeah, it's, it's going away from realism, going into action. So, and. It's not really a true MMO right now either. So what is Star Citizen? And I think un until it really truly beds itself down and gets its own identity, um, I think there's going to be different types of people doing different types of things in the game. And you're not going to get that that kind of understanding and, and kind of, you know, these games like World of Warcraft, they've been around for years and they've built that culture within that game. Like people act in a certain way and mm -hmm. for the most part. And that takes time and it's bedded down. The culture needs to be bedded down. But we, even though we've been around for 10 years, and I say we, because you know, I'm obviously part of Star Citizen Collective, like we all are, um, I don't think there's a proper culture. I mean, we can't even agree on whether griefing's griefing um, or whether it's pirating. <laughs> that will never happen. We can't, agree. That one we can't <laughs> agree on what it is. You know, some people are absolutely outraged. They've been PvP griefed. And, you know, other people say, well, it's part of the game. So we can't even agree on the the basic fundamentals as a player base. So how can we agree what the game is and how can we bed cultures and way of doing things within the game? It, it takes time. And, and until we, you know, we lay the groundwork, you know, the foundations, which we haven't yet done because we've only got one system. Um, we're not going to get there, but it's, it's interesting. We we're certainly say, I think there's good strides going forward, but we're nowhere near being a, a complete game at this point yeah time, absolutely unfortunately absolutely not so you think there's still plenty of time for people to figure that that sort of culture of interaction out i think we'll be talking about this in two or three years time and it and it wouldn't have moved forward i i certainly I'm hope so because the way that people react to each other right now is so worrying um but we don't have a rating oh, system yeah. we don't have a law system like there's a lot of stuff that d doesn't help to give players much confidence when they when they meet someone else for the first time and I still haven't forgotten what it's like 
to go into the verse for the very first time. I, I actually did that as a live stream and I, I go look back on it sometimes. It's so embarrassing now because I thought I was going to crash into planets when I was approaching them and stuff. So like ducking out of the way. Um, but I remember how overwhelming it was and we should never forget for new players how overwhelming Star Citizen can be. And yeah, I forget that all the time. Yeah, it's really important to remember that because, because you know, we, we don't want to be frightening new players off because um, they are the future of the game as well. And I feel like at the moment, sometimes if you see people in like a Aurora or something, we think, you know, some people might just automatically open fire on them and stuff. And then you <laughs> just have that moment of feel, cool, like, this could be a new player, start a ship, you know. There's just no reason to open wrong. fire either. But, uh... Well, some people play in pirate game loops. I mean, the, you know, the proper way of doing pirating, I suppose, is to go through like a, a role play scenario where you, you know, you announce yourself. You, yeah, you, you, know, you go through this process, don't you? A good pirate will go through that process of saying, "Stop there! What are you doing? You know, this is what you know, I don't. I'm not a pirate, but I would I would expect that's a rock miner. If someone intervenes me and, and and you know creeps up on me, I'd expect to then go through a scenario where I have you to know what's actually going on. If you're just getting, yeah. if somebody just goes out and shoots auroras and kills them just because, then they're just a serial yeah. killer without a strategy. Yeah, it's and not. where's where's the fun really for both sides? What what is what are they going to get out of it? Nothing. Um, apart from a crime stat three, which they'll probably just go and clear straight away. But so I think these are these are we're talking about the we've we've sort of evolved into the culture of the game, and I I think there's a real split on the culture of the game at the moment, and that's why we're losing some players because, you know, I I don't know it's it's it's, it's a weird one. I don't, I don't know how you fix it either because. I it's, think it's broken in places. Well, so yeah, we've started to shift more towards talking about piracy and griefing and 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 those things. I think that that's something that's going to be a problem a lot until we have more nuance, until we have more systems. Because the the fact of the matter is that the idea of piracy and griefing will change based on the star system you're in. If somebody rolls up to you at a normal space station where you spawned right as you lifted off and shoots off your wings and tells you they're going to come and take all your stuff off the ship, that's, that's piracy. In the Stanton system, someone might respond to it and think it's just griefing. In Pyro, nobody's really going to tell you, hey, yeah, you shouldn't have, that's, that's, uh, they griefed you. Like that's, you are in the place where people are expected to do that. And I think that's yeah. going to start to be something that forms as we get more and more systems and they really need to build out exactly. the reputation. That's what we need as a game. We need a second system or we need, we need to clearly define stuff. Like pyro, you will get destroyed. You will get shot at. You will get, this is a pirate you know, area. This is, this is to be expected. And Stanton is a lot more friendly, blah, blah, blah. So I think we need to sort of bed down. This is what I'm saying about the, the bedding down of kind of culture. And you'll start to see as new systems sweep out three forward thinking that you'll see that culture begin to take shape and that really i think they could go a step further with that cig could make it very very clear with you know shading on the hud with the colors of some of the lights maybe in your cockpit with a quick ui blurb that pops up something that informs you of the area you're in whose yeah. reputation you need to worry about there and what the danger levels are those kinds of things could go and do so much to help players in those situations and, and even further oh, yeah, maybe tell sure. players if the, the ship they're targeting is in scm or in quantum mode obviously i think people will still want to chill in scm mode just because of the shields but for the most part i think you'll find people in quantum mode and you'll just be able to know hey they're they're traveling they're not even focusing on weapons they're not thinking about combat and that should also help that kind of a thing yeah it's it's going to be interesting. I, I'm looking forward to that and seeing how they go with that. But we know that's a while away. Yeah. Um. So we're all kind of essentially we're all just shoved in a fishbowl right now. Yeah. Exactly. And, uh, and it's we're in Stanton fishbowl and everybody's in it together. And it's really hard to bed down a culture and a way of doing things. And and we're all in the same tiny little space. Yeah. So we couldn't. We can't expect it to be like a World of Warcraft where everything is bedded down and everyone knows what everything is and how how you should act in certain realms and re regions or whatever you know it's just not happening until we expand 
outwards. Yeah, this game has a lot of growing pains. The, yeah, that's, oh, for sure. That's and it's just gonna, it's going to get worse before it gets better as well, yeah. I would imagine. Yep. But, uh, on the, you know, that, that's been rather, that's been slightly negative on the game. Um, there's there's a lot, lot of positives on it as well. And uh, Stanton is, is quite complete. It's pretty solid, isn't it? Um, you know, so for someone like me, will, will I stay in Stanton system for the foreseeable, even if they roll out Pyro? No, definitely not. I'm definitely going to be on the front line, but other people might feel, might take comfort staying in the Stanton system. And that's, that's, that's pretty cool as well. I, I like that. You know, you, it's going to separate the PVPers from the PVEers. Yeah. Or it's not really yeah. PVE, is it? It'll be the first okay. time that we really get to separate the, the, the community and see how things form which i'm excited for my biggest hope is that there are updates to the game systems themselves that affect the whole game and not just pyro or else we're gonna i mean no doubt we're gonna see a heavy emphasis on people going to pyro rather than staying in stanton you know, obviously people who would normally yeah. stay in stanton are gonna want to see what's new but i do hope that there is enough going into the game as a whole that those people can feel free to settle back into Stanton and still be getting some of that new stuff because it really would be interesting to see as soon as possible how that's going to affect the player base. It's exciting, especially Social considering experiment. we've been doing this for six years now with uh, with no other change. So You have, I haven't, one and a half years. <laughs> I don't know how you keep keep evergreen and happy and positive. You've gotten, I, I to, uh, you've gotten to deal with all of the built-up rage because of that, so you've been inducted. Yeah, yeah. I came I came in at a good time. Everyone always tells tells me I came in at a good time. Three one three. Yeah. Onward. So apparently it was a good time. Yeah, three so, one uh, three was what I always consider this like a term that I've kind of thumbed up, but uh the the fourth phase of development for the game it, I think was around three three point thirteen, three point fourteen. They finished Crusader. They started with the inventory, the medical system. We could see that they were starting to work on some of the more intensive things like the Gen 12 renderer and like things started finishing up there. I think we're in the, the midst of it now, but that was a great time to start because you get to see a lot of movement. Yeah. So because you've been in it for like, how long have you been in this year? Have you been in from the very, very start or have you no. six plus years? I, I was very off. I backed the game in 2014. But I wasn't really paying that close of attention until 2018. Oh, uh, right. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, do you, I mean, after sort of five, six years, we're talking about this kind of fatigue thing that's that's kind of creeping in, which I think is is a real thing right now. Mm -hmm. um, have you ever felt that fatigue? Oh, yes. I actually, the reason I took off most of, let's see, what was it? My wife always reminds me of this. Um, I think it was 2017 I stopped playing because I was just tired of it's essentially 2017 was the first version of what we're experiencing now and we'll talk a little bit more about that but the wait for 3.0 was very rough and it was around that time when I just was done with the project I completely ignored it for like six months and even wow. since then I've never really had a machine that was good at playing this game so it's always been kind of a frustrating experience. Even now I get like 20 to 25 frames per second. It's not fun. So no. I, yeah, I oftentimes get very tired of playing and I just want to be able to jump into a stable environment where I can interact with things reliably and run a mission that I know will complete and like try to log <laughs> on and actually get into the game. Yeah, there, I have yeah. so many things I could complain about with the game. But I think the saving grace for me is that I have always, it's only started to change in the last year. I've always been more interested in the development than actually playing the game. And I think that's yeah. what kept me from going crazy for such a long time. I mean, the, yeah, I mean, you get two types of people, don't you? you get the people that are really into the development of the game and how it's, how it's evolving and are really into it. And you get people that just want to play. They mm -hmm. just want to get in a ship and shiny ship and fly around and shoot things and do whatever, you know. Yeah. And I fall into the second category, I think, where I just want to play the game and I'm not necessarily that into what they're doing. Um, which is, which is, uh, I think people, who, I think people like me, not me at all, but 
people that have fallen into my category are the most likely to to like go go away <laughs> do other things yeah. you know yeah and i don't blame them for it i think that's no. I, I think it's a very good idea absolutely phenomenally good idea for people to take periodic breaks from a game like star citizen this is not a game that's made to be played hardcore for long amounts of time this is an alpha practically a tech demo that is broken in many different places and is literally just a chance to see what's coming along it's been 10 years so it sounds really dumb to say that at this point but the fact of them that's just how it is you this this whole 10 year thing and this whole 500 million thing um which is a wet fish smashed around their faces quite often yeah you know the the, the 500 million thing is that a lot of money for a game of this size for 10 years really? i don't think so no i don't think so when you split it over 10 years but like the other thing as well i mean the 10 year thing it, it this is a this is a huge project, isn't it? I mean, this this is revolutionary stuff here. I mean, nobody else is really doing this, are, are they? I would say not not a combination of these things. No, there are definitely yeah. like people doing specific parts in different games, but to combine it all into something like what they're trying to do is yes, one hundred percent unique. Yeah. Well, okay, so, not one hundred. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty unique, and often games that are doing this on a some albeit a smaller scale let's, let's say apb for example which was much smaller scale but similar they had the same visions they wanted this massive open world thing and they fell horribly short and their funding uh went into the went into the multi-millions as well you know went into the hundred millions as well so I, when you look at the bigger scale i mean yeah you can you can criticize star citizen and quit scam citizen or whatever people say but you know, I'm st for, through all the negatives. I'm I'm still very pro Star Citizen. I think it's it's a great project, and uh, it has so many faults, but it's it's still a great project. So I'm call me a white knight or whatever you want to call me, but I honestly do think it's great. I I still play it all all the time. I still play it every day, most days. Um, so I don't want to you know suggest that I'm I'm picking holes or anything like that with the game because I am, but at the same time. I still, there's a lot going for it, you know? Well, you said, um, you said that, um, you, you still play it. You play it a lot. You play it regularly. You yeah. asked me about how I've dealt with like the burnout and just playing something that really hasn't changed that much over time. I mentioned that the good thing to do there is either, well, I mentioned that it's good to take breaks, but there's also another option, which is just to kind of regulate how much you're playing. Some people like mm -hmm. to play games hardcore for one month, 10 hours a day, and then be done with them. Some people like to play a couple hours every week for a long time. Do you do you employ any sort of strategy to avoid burning out with this game, or you just naturally can play it and you don't really have much problem? The problem with Star Citizen that we have at the moment, you can't just pick it up and play it for an hour because you won't get out the station in an hour. <laughs> or you won't, you won't be able to spawn your ship get in your ship, fly out to a location within an hour because everything takes five hours. Mm -hmm. So especially when you're doubling up with people. So you have to dedicate some time to playing Star Citizen. You, you know, it's not a pick up and drop game. Yeah. So that's that's problem number one. So um, when people want to unwind of an evening, they've got home from work. It's already five, six, seven o'clock in the evening. They want to play a game. Maybe not Star Citizen because, you know, you've got a couple of hours and you're thinking about turning in or whatever so that's a problem straight away but uh for me personally the issue isn't so much around the gameplay or lack of gameplay or whatever you want to say the game loops it's more about stability i have big issues with the stability even though the latest patch seems to have kind of semi-resolved it but mm -hmm. it literally breaks the game for me i remember doing a rock mining live stream i crashed every 15 minutes on that stream and, and ended up abandoning it because it was just so insane. I And it wouldn't just crash. It wouldn't just do a 30 K. It's kind of okay if it does that, cause you're protected to a degree, but yeah. it was crashing to desktop. It was doing the verification thing. And my machine in like you, I've got a bit of a potato machine, so it wouldn't just crash to desktop. It would freeze my machine <laughs> completely. Oh. And if, if I was live streaming, I had a single PC game over. <laughs> so, uh, it, it was horrific. I, I think it went through a stage where 
the crashes were so extreme. It was just ridiculous. It was so bad. It was unplayable. And that was the point where I had the burnout. I did have a burnout on the game. Mm-hmm. Um, so, so for me, it's all about stability, you know? Okay. Rather than what's coming, you know, the, the, the concept ships and all this sort of thing. I'm not really that into it. It's, it's, it's about the stability. So getting the client to function as a client properly where it boots the game and you don't, you know, yeah. you don't crash the desktop or whatever. That, that's a bigger deal to me than what's coming in 2028. You know. that, yeah yeah if you can if you can separate yourself from like the slow development and just enjoy the game that's there i think it really does come down to that if if the things that are there are working you can have fun with them but there's just no way to try and enjoy it if you're dealing with workarounds and glitches and crashes constantly one or two maybe but yeah i think i think getting the game to some sort of a more stable position which is you know, it's a game in alpha. How much can they do that would help a yeah. lot with, with that kind of, um, with that burnout. Yeah. I, I have complete and total respect for anybody that live streams or covers Star Citizen because we will probably know more than anyone. To get content out of the game is an absolute nightmare. Um, if you do a VOD and you're not using B-roll, you're using, pro, you know, you're going in and you're spawning the ships or borrowing the ships oh, and you're boy. doing this and, that, and it crashes... Yeah, that's like two hours gone. And you yeah. have to do the same again. You go into the game, spawn the ship, da, 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 get to where you need to get to, do all of this stuff. Yeah, it's 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 actually quite horrible. And uh <laughs> I've I've given up on certain videos because I've I've just had such a hard time just getting the shots that I need to get. Yeah. It's just like, you know what, forget it. <laughs> yeah. That's why I transitioned a lot of my stuff to using what was already pre made because trying to film and get enough footage for videos in game is very difficult and it's a different side of burnout content creation burnout is definitely a thing when it comes to star citizen too yeah 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 it's a it's a 100 percent thing for sure yeah because you know you gotta you gotta you're playing this game there's there's an element where you build a channel i'm going to talk about content creation a little bit here you you build a channel around the community and the community is star citizen and you kind of feel you are obliged to keep doing star citizen content even if you're burnt out on the game you have to do the star citizen because if you don't then you know your channel dies essentially so you you feel kind of like almost you have to do star citizen well i mean i've i've taken i've recently taken the decision to do other things as well which and it's the best thing i've ever done <laughs> in my <laughs> life i still do star citizen a lot um but i i like to do other things now as well just to just to keep you know, mental wellness and it's, it's yeah. a big deal and it's, it's yeah. it really does get to you after what when you're constantly crashing to desktop and you know you're trying to achieve things and the game just it feels like it's against you some days and other game other days it's just fine i don't know it's it's sometimes you get to a point where you're like i, I don't know if i can do this anymore yeah um and i think i think so, some some certainly some content creators around this this area of, of, you know, in Star Citizen have, have definitely come out publicly and said recently that they feel completely burnt out on the, <laughs> on the game. Yeah. And I get it. I totally get it. It's yeah. doing a lot of the same stuff for a long time. And I think especially with the, with the possibilities that this year held and the difficulties that they've had with 318, which really was a large part of those possibilities. Yeah. I think it just kind of runs, runs people to their end. And like I said, towards the beginning of the, podcast we have a wipe coming we have a new update coming which means the old one is a little bit stale um and we've had the same gameplay that people have been doing for essentially six months now so it it, everything is kind of combined for a period of pretty high burnout it seems amongst the community and so mr tomato yeah if you were chris roberts right now what would you do what what would be your priority in the game Jeez. If you could push one thing, if you've got a team of developers, and um, what would you, and you sat down and said, right, what, what can we do right now? How can we, I mean, obviously without going into the detail of it, but. Yeah, these super on, developers, on the they can just work on any part of the game I want them to. Anything, if they can drop Squadron 42, and please drop Squadron 42, no one wants that game. I want that game. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you want the game? <laughs> There's a pretty large part of the community that I think that wants the game that's more more quiet. If you're, can you, if you're watching this right now, put a comment down below do you want to see squadron 42 or do you want the pu 
I actually had a clip that I released uh, just a couple days ago. It's on the second channel, and you can you can check that out because there's comments in there of people saying whether they do or do want do not want it. Are you going to put a link right now to that video? Sure, go I'll check it out, somewhere. guys. It's up there somewhere. There you go. <laughs> I hope I for, I hope I remember when this was. But if you didn't put a link, it's on somewhere. Now I gotta like write this down. Let's see, fifty four, fifty six. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I think there's a more silent group of the community that wants Squadron, mainly older backers that aren't paying as much attention right now. But it's important. But to answer your question, yeah, I'd have them go to server meshing. I know more bodies don't mean less problems, but that, in my opinion, that is 100% the most important thing that we need to confirm works. You know, like there are plenty of things that they want to do, that they're trying to do, that they're working towards that eventually they'll get. Lava, sure. AI, better AI, sure. An actual economy with real functioning commodities and Ooh, base building yes. and crafting. All of those things I see as possible and I see as provable with things that they're developing in the game. Server meshing though, how the heck do we prove that that works, right? Before we yeah. actually get it. I would love just to get some sort of example of that going so we know, hey, this is graspable, this is tangible, this will happen soon. But, you know, I'm not how a doctor. How close have they got to proving it? Have you seen anything? To proving to, to, it? That's made you go, yeah, to, to proving this is gonna be, this is gonna work. No, absolutely not. There's, they're, they're, that's what I'm saying. How could they? They can't even really prove per se that PES works. Like they can describe it to us and they can show us B-roll of it, but they can't put it on camera like they can with salvage gameplay. No, it's not physical, is it? It's, yeah. it's something that's behind the scenes. So, it's not a new shiny ship. Yeah. So I've seen some of the tech that goes into server meshing working, um, but that's all pre-engine that's, you know, not applied to star citizen as a whole that's not really it actually working that's just the back end sort of supportive tech so nobody really knows do you know what i would do hmm. i would roll out custom paint, ship paint designs paints that's it i right now as it stands i would roll out paint designs for your ships can you imagine the field day that orgs will have painting all their ships the same color and Imagine how much money they would make if they could sell custom skins. I mean, they've kind of started that, but yeah, they could they could blow that up a lot more. Literally, where you can design your own skin. Mm. Yeah, that would be cool. Um, I think that would be enough to keep people happy for the next three, four months. Maybe, but whenever they roll out one of those programs, they don't really Where's the roll out completely. As a Mr. Tomato, I Come just because yes, we've gotten skins. I don't know. We, we've we don't gotten... have skins. How many skins have we got on a Grey Cat Rock? We got, oh, we got geez. what? Hadonite paint, Aphrodite paint, Dollar yeah, don't ask, paint. Don't ask me because I don't pay any attention to that stuff. Three. <laughs> and, then, and then bog standard newbie paint. And that's pretty much it. And there's a couple more paints as well, which I can't remember. But there's, it's like, See, if you, if you, yeah, they need paints. I want, See, but I want paints. This is the dichotomy again of the community. You're talking about it from the perspective of playing the game and enjoying the game now. And I'm number, talking about it from the, the perspective. The number twos of the community rather <laughs> than the number ones of the community. Oh, uh, no. Yeah. I, think, I think if you were playing this game two years ago, you would realize who was the number ones. It's definitely a lot <laughs> of the work that we have seen in the last two years has gone into making this game more enjoyable right now. From so that's, 30k that's fixes... <laughs> they haven't fixed 30k's i had one yesterday i had two yesterday mm, my friend I'll, I'll i'll take you back two years and you'll see that they might still be around Time but machine. they have been fixed oh right. man they, um, yeah, well they've probably been better then we couldn't even like send money to each other not too long ago oh like yeah. we didn't have an inventory system there was no loot like all these things made the game as we were playing it so so much better and they're basics for sure but do you remember the old days of what, the old black and white days when everything was like we didn't have that in our day and we didn't have that in our day <laughs> but that doesn't yeah. mean today is Man great that just means today's not as bad as well, the bad times that's that's you know? that's the mantra of star citizen <laughs> you, you're <laughs> ripping your hair out yes now <laughs> but at least you have hair <laughs> <laughs> oh dear um, no i just honestly i i think paints i don't just give me some paints i want to be able to go into a little paint package and just design my own paint like in minecraft when you create uh, your own character that would or be cool slap it on a ship 
A lot of, lot of lost money potential. Unique. Oh, yeah. That's a, a, that's a cash cow. Yeah. Yeah, I'm telling Chris, if you'll give me, give me some paints, give me a little editor that I can, you know, buy, <laughs> buy some, some, I'll take a red we'll and a see. green, they've, mix them together. They've talked about like hex codes and, and stuff. So we'll, oh, yeah. yeah, we'll see what happens. So I don't know. I don't know. You could have a tomato colored prospector. Oh, they'll do that. Don't worry. They'll, they'll get that done. I'll, I'll, yeah. uh, I'll petition them until they get us a tomato red. I think, you know, you got some influence these days. Mr. T, I reckon <laughs> no, you should just I have no, swagger don't, into their please Manchester don't office. don't say that on, on this podcast. Is people, people actually think that like <laughs> content <laughs> creators are changing the game. Don't and... lie, you're friends with Chris. We all know. <laughs> You've been seen in a pub actually, in Manchester together. I actually, so here's the secret. I haven't been able to build a new computer for a few years. So back in 2020, I actually, they flew me out to Los Angeles. I met up with Chris Roberts and I told him, hey man, I need you to wait like five years before, you know, the 40 series is in stock. I'll be able to upgrade my computer. Then I'll be ready. Just delay the game and it'll be okay. It'll work out perfectly. He's like, okay, okay. I got you, Tomato. I'll, I'll do that. Don't tell people, uh, right? This is just for I the podcast audience, but yeah. Yeah. <laughs> our connections. Yeah. I'm I'm best friends with Chris Roberts because mm -hmm. I'm English and he's English, so we automatically know oh, yeah. each other. Yeah, that makes sense. That's just Every person with that. an English accent I've met has known each other. Yeah, we all it's know pretty, each other. Pretty wild. We're on an island. With That's, how it is. That's how islands are. Yeah, but uh, I have I have just a couple more questions here. I wanted to ask you about the sort of like burnout. One of the things we didn't really touch on. We did talk about how like the community feels the burnout, but how does the community add to it? Do you feel like the community at all, whether it be the discourse that's currently going on or maybe the content that's coming out or the general morale of the community, does that add to your kind of like your burnout, whether you want to put the game down for a while or not? Yeah, I mean, my community were the first to burn out <laughs> before me. <laughs> um I, I just, uh, yeah, I mean, they, th yeah, you, you see it, you just see it. I mean, just, you just have to look at Discord. You just have to look at Discord and, and what people are playing on, you know, is playing so-and-so. Mm -hmm. Like before I'd look at, I'd look at the list and it'd be like, it's playing Star Citizen, it's playing Star Citizen, it's playing Star Citizen. Now it's like, it's playing Elden Rings, it's playing Satisfactory. And I'm like, oh, okay. Ooh, Satisfactory. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So you can just visualize, you can see it, you can see it, you know, and, and in the discord and you can see it in the numbers and you can see it on Google trends and you can see it actually on Twitch. When mm -hmm. you look at, I don't, I'm not on Twitch, but you, you look at the number of people streaming the game and the viewers, that, viewerships that are watching these, these channels, it's re re significantly reduced. Yeah. But like you say, there's multiple reasons as to why that's happening. And this is traditionally a, a, a quiet period. It is. But it is for game. sure. Yeah. But but that discouraging, the discouragement to play kind of permeates between people. I, I think I definitely because I watch a lot of uh, YouTube content on Star Citizen. I, I they recently talked about upgrading the price or you no know, charging people to stream 4K and they've just upgraded prices of YouTube premium. And I know there are a lot of complaints, but I probably get much more time and entertainment out of YouTube than I do out of Netflix or Hulu or any of those things. So I get that. Mm. I, I sit on YouTube and watch it a lot. And I definitely watch a couple of Star Citizen content creators pretty regularly. And I can say that like the way that they communicate the news or what's coming up or that kind of stuff affects my own outlook. Not to the point where it changes my videos, but you get as influenced by influencers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And as a <laughs> as a person who is just interested in playing the game at times, definitely has an effect. Yeah, I mean, like I say, pe people who actually play the game, there's another thing. People who, people who actually play the game on, on YouTube Live, and there's a few people that do that, you can see the struggle they go through on the game. <laughs> yeah. The people who are reporting on the game, um, whether it's reaction or news or something, you know, they don't necessarily see the struggle because they're focusing on more on what's coming in the future. So mm -hmm. they're focused on the future, whereas... People like me is focusing on the now. So you can really, I can really, I can watch someone live and I can see their struggle live on the game. And that is, that is echoing what the, the, the person, you know, the average person on the average gaming 
you know, who plays this game, like people like me, the average person that goes in and plays the game, you can see the struggle they're having and that's not healthy. Yeah. Um, it, it's, it's, it's actually quite bad. Um, the latest patch has improved things in terms of, I'm talking about stability as well, mm-hmm. obviously, but like, I think this game is built on what's coming tomorrow and people tend to ignore what's there today. Um, and that's why the game's suffering, perhaps as well. It helps you but, helps you uh, block out you know. some of those problems, and it just yeah, it just yeah. builds up, and you get burnt out. That's it's a cycle. Yeah. It's predictable. It it's unavoidable. It is inevitable. It is the Star Citizen cycle, and uh, we're yeah. right at the right at the end of it right now in terms of three seventeen. I really do hope that three eighteen comes out this year. I, there's a lot of crazy predictions about it taking a, a while. Some people believe it won't come out until come from Reddit. Citizen Reddit's Con next the one year. That drives those things, yeah. Well, I, I it, just also just like past past performance. CIG's never been great in terms of their predictions, and so far with PES, uh, it's been a fire. So you know, I, I think it's you, you are literally like a robot, though. Space, I have to say, you, <laughs> you just push out that content regularly on clock you know, go into all the depth all the d- deep burns all the, all of the drills of the game i don't know how you do it it's fun I don't know how you can it's, it's like fun. i said like i said I-, I am lucky that i get so enthused about the actual development yeah you you must really i mean that's that's the thing isn't it it's you're definitely a number one so you're definitely looking at the build of the game, and that's quite exciting. It's quite, I can see why it's quite exciting. It's quite, quite a novelty, actually, to be part of a, a project that's building and growing yeah. and developing and evolving. That, and I can see why that's exciting. Yeah, but I definitely so have I the it. itch to play it. I definitely I have the frustrations. I share the frustrations with people who are trying to play the game. Uh, recently started playing X4 Foundations as like kind of my alternative space sim. Yeah. And yeah, me too. <laughs> so it's it, it, like I'm I'm partial way both ways. I'm definitely leaning more towards being excited about the development, but um, more and more as the game gets better, I think I start to shift more towards playing it. And as I shift more towards playing it, I start to worry yeah. more about the actual game. And as that happens, I also start to feel more of that burnout. So there's some kind of a balance there. You can tell some people don't enjoy playing the game, but cover the game. But you definitely come across as enthusiastic for, the, for both sides. So that's that's a good thing. I would like to get you on a freelancer Max flying over Magda, st- pinging uh, Had Night with me at some point. That'd yeah. be fun. Some mining? Yeah. I'd love to do some group mining. Do it. Yeah. Yeah. It'd yeah, that'd be, be great. I'm, I'm probably going to be doing some, some loot running today, but we got to set that up. And that's on camera, ladies and gentlemen. It's confirmed. And, <laughs> and, and why don't you... Why don't just to wrap us here, wrap us up here. Why don't you let the people know where they might find that, where they can find your content and uh, what content you're even making? Right. Well, I mean, down here, Star Streams on YouTube, 100% YouTube. I cover Star Citizen, maybe seven out of ten videos is Star Citizen. A lot of rock mining, how tos, and bits and pieces, and tips and guides and places to find Had Night and that kind of stuff. I just love rock mining. I do other bits and pieces as well with Captain Hannah, who's another YouTuber. And uh, yeah, that's where you can find me. And uh, definitely look me up as well. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Tomato. This has been fun, right? Yeah, yeah, it's good times. Deep dive. Why? Yeah. Why did you decide to go exclusively YouTube? I've always been on YouTube since 2007. I've had multiple channels on YouTube. Um, I like the culture. I like the vibe. I've sacrificed the views, but it's totally worth it, right? <laughs> Okay. I just I just like it all under one roof. I do a lot of videos, vods and stuff, and I do loads of live streams. And I just like everything in one place. It's just much easier. It does make it easier. Yeah. 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 Cool. Well, thank you so much for joining me. This was again Pleasure. episode seventy four. Could talk about the burnout and uh sort of long in the tooth feelings we get from Star Citizen after these cycles. But if you want more podcast goodness, my friends, we don't stop with the launch sequence. That's right. I have another podcast that follows Star Citizen. In fact, uh, this is a group podcast. It happens once a month at the end of every month. I bring on a couple of creators or people from the community and we talk about the big topics in the game. So if you'd like that, those will actually be uploaded to um, all of my audio platforms, Anchor, Apple, Spotify, 
and we'll be starting a new feed for that soon. So the first three episodes will go live with the Launch Sequence podcast. The rest will be going into their own podcast. So make sure to check those out in the next couple of weeks. If you'd like to help support those podcasts or this one, all uh, we are completely funded by the community. So any donations, any tips, any any support helps. Patreon is the best way to do that. And um, if you would like more of these, please subscribe on YouTube if you're watching there or follow on any of our audio platforms. Thank you so much for joining me for the Launch Sequence podcast. Star Streams, one more time. Thank you again for coming. Thank you again, Mr. T. We'll of do course. This again. Probably course. in Magda. Yeah. On a freelance max. Yes. Pinging, pinging the moon surface, looking for some hat. It's happening. I'm telling you, it's happening. It will. It will. It will. It Thank will. you, everybody, for coming. And I'll see you all next week. Bye.